Okay, hi guys. So I've just made this little PowerPoint uh, just to help my students uh, with the diffraction grating and how it works and what's really going on. Uh, so just to let you know, so what is a diffraction grating? Well, basically it's something like a slide which has like uh, many, many lines uh, that allow light to go through. And the lines are all in the same plane or in the same polarization. Okay, so... Uh, what I've done here, uh, the little, the, uh, you can see the, the black line going down and the gaps between it represent the, the gaps in the diffraction grating. So D would be the distance between the gaps within the diffraction grating. Now, you've got coherent light coming from a laser, so coherent means that the, it's got a constant phase difference between uh, different parts of the light, that's not changing. And that will allow superposition to uh, occur. So the light is coming from the laser and it's coming through the gaps in our diffraction grating. Now, one of those uh, beams of light will just go straight through, okay? And then that would be the, the zero order, the, the light that just goes straight through the diffraction grating. Okay, but because of diffraction, okay, so the light is diffracting through... Uh, uh, the gaps in all different directions, okay, one beam will happen to go in this direction, okay? And then that will just be one wavelength behind a beam from the gap below, which will be one wavelength behind uh, the gap below that, etc. And you end up with a wavefront that's moving in that direction and all the light from all the different diffraction gratings is in phase. So when this particular ray or the rays coming from all the diffraction gratings hits a screen, you're going to get uh, constructive interference and you'll see uh, a, a dot of light at that position. And it's the same as well, that again, there'll be another angle where uh, you will get two wavelengths of light, okay, that will pass through. And then once they just pass the second slit, that will also have two wavelengths of light coming through, okay, in that direction. And again, and again and again and again this is the second order so here now again is the angles changed but again there'll be constructive interference at the screen with all these rays of light coming towards each other sorry coming towards the screen uh, and they'll they'll add up uh, uh, and will end up with a, uh, a bright dot on the screen produced by this okay so just with the first order of what's going on, well, at this angle, okay, um, we're going to use sine. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so our opposite angle, sorry, our opposite length just happens to be the same length as one whole wavelength, okay? And then the angle here is the same as the angle uh, of the beam that's going to go off from the uh, the beam of light that goes straight forwards, or, or, sorry, or straight through, okay? And then uh, that beam of light will go on, and then you'll get superposition uh, occurring at the screen, and then those waves, lengths, sorry, those waves will add up, okay? And then it's the same for n equals 2. So this time, you've, your uh, opposite... Uh, uh, length is actually two wavelengths. So this time d sine theta equals two lambda. Okay, and then of course it'll be the same for the next one where you can have possibly like three wavelengths. Okay, so something like this. So the opposite has got three wavelengths. Okay, uh, so d sine theta equals three uh, lambda. So each time the opposite length is equal to a whole number of wavelengths, then we know uh, the corresponding a beam of light that goes off is going to end up with uh, a constructive super uh, constructive interference and we're going to get a beam of light there. So this is why we can generally say d sine theta equals n lambda where n is a whole number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Okay guys, hope that's been useful. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye for now.